Superfoods is somewhat of a misleading concept because it has no objective criteria and you can apply it to almost any food. Eat berries for vitamin C, superfood. Eat meat for iron, superfood. But in my opinion, garlic could be considered objectively a superfood because of its metabolic effects on the human body and how it's seen to improve health in human clinical trials. I'm not talking about garlic bread, just regular garlic. And in this video, I'm going to share with you some of the research about garlic and also the amounts that is beneficial to eat. Garlic is an allium vegetable, which is a relative to onions, shallot, and leeks. It's usually used as seasoning in food, and it's been a part of Mediterranean, Asian, and Middle Eastern cuisine for centuries. If you've ever eaten garlic, then you either hate it or love it. I feel like there's almost like no middle ground. Most people will either like it or don't like it at all. But it is quite a unique food in that sense. First, it probably has one of the strongest odors out of all foods, and you can recognize the smell quite easily. Easily. Secondly, it's effective against vampires, so maybe that's the reason some people don't like it. When it comes to the health benefits, then garlic has been seen to work on dozens of different pathways in the body that have anti-inflammatory, antiplatelet, antioxidant, antilipidemic, anti-diabetic, anti-atherosclerotic, anti-apoptotic, antibacterial, and endothelial benefits. Garlic thus might have therapeutic effects on things like atherosclerosis, metabolic syndrome, and cardiovascular disease. Looking at mechanisms is one thing, and garlic has quite compelling mechanisms evidence. But we should base our decisions predominantly on human clinical trials. Fortunately, there is quite a lot of human clinical trials on garlic which supports its mechanistic evidence. For example, a 2015 meta-analysis of clinical trials showed that garlic intake lowered systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure. The effects were seen in people with already existing hypertension more so than in people with normal blood pressure. And the dose for maximum benefits was 480 milligrams of supplemental garlic for 12 weeks. A 2024 meta-analysis of clinical trials showed that garlic supplements lowered fasting blood sugar, hemoglobin A1c, total cholesterol, and LDL cholesterol, while also increasing HDL cholesterol. In this study, they used both raw garlic as well as garlic extracts. Another 2024 meta-analysis showed that garlic could also reduce waist circumference and inflammation in addition to the cholesterol, blood pressure, and blood sugar. This makes it potentially useful for alleviating metabolic syndrome, which is a major risk factor for heart disease. Because garlic is high in sulfur, it supports the production of one of the main antioxidants in the body called glutathione. In elderly people, ingestion of garlic has been shown to increase levels of different antioxidants like glutathione peroxidase and superoxide dismutase while decreasing markers of oxidative stress. This makes garlic potentially useful for supporting the immune system and lowering inflammation. A 2020 meta-analysis of clinical trials showed that garlic supplements lower CRP levels, which is a marker of systemic inflammation, but it didn't reduce IL-6, which is another marker of inflammation. And aged garlic extracts also lower TNF-alpha, which is another inflammatory marker involved in cancer and other diseases. So overall, it does look like garlic has anti-inflammatory effects in humans. Humans. Overall, that's quite a lot of studies. These meta-analyses include dozens of clinical trials, which is considered one of the highest quality of evidence in science. And these effects have been seen in supplemental garlic as well as raw garlic itself. The next question is that, is there any evidence that eating garlic would reduce your risk of these chronic diseases? We know that it affects these biomarkers related to chronic diseases like inflammation, but is it actually going to reduce the risk? In a 2019 study on the Chinese population, they found that habitual consumption of garlic was associated Associated with a lower risk of all-cause mortality. The oldest old who consumed garlic more than five times a week had an 11% decrease in the risk of mortality compared to those who consumed it less than once a week. Another 2023 study on the US population found that moderate garlic consumption was linked to a decreased risk of colorectal cancer as well. Now these are observational studies which are more limited in their evidence than the clinical trials, but it's hard to do these kind of long-term studies in humans as well to look at the risk of these chronic diseases. And if you see an improvement in the blood markers, then that typically does reduce the risk of these chronic diseases as well. When it comes to heart disease, the number one chronic disease in the world, then garlic has been shown to reduce the risk factors of heart disease, such as cholesterol, inflammation, blood pressure, even waist circumference. But can it actually affect atherosclerosis or even reverse it? A 2021 study found that light to moderate garlic consumption one to three times per week was inversely associated with carotid intima media thickness, which indicates plaque buildup in the arteries. This means that 
the people who ate garlic had less plaque buildup in the arteries. Several clinical trials have found that aged garlic extract supplementation lowers coronary artery calcification progression. Now, these are very small studies and they don't often control for other lifestyle factors. But like I said earlier, you have mechanistic evidence as well as the evidence from clinical trials that garlic supplementation or garlic intake can improve these risk factors. So that makes the evidence slightly more compelling in my eyes. A 2019 double-blinded placebo-controlled study on patients at high risk of cardiovascular disease showed that 2400 milligrams of aged garlic extract a day increased microcirculation and triggered wound healing in the blood vessels, which protected against atherosclerosis progression. Another 2018 randomized trial demonstrated that 250 milligrams of aged garlic extract a day for 12 months slowed down atherosclerosis progression by reducing fat around the heart. All of this, in my eyes at least, suggests that garlic has a positive effect on atherosclerosis, is going to modulate the risk factors of atherosclerosis and heart disease, and it's also going to promote endothelial function, because endothelial dysfunction is one of the main drivers of atherosclerosis. The problem is that garlic supplements and raw garlic can interact with some other drugs used in heart disease, such as blood thinners. That's why it's not recommended to take garlic together with pharmaceuticals. And don't get it twisted, garlic isn't superior to other pharmaceuticals like metformin or statins when it comes to heart disease or diabetes. It might have have some benefits for people who don't have these diseases, but they might have slightly suboptimal blood markers, like they have slightly elevated cholesterol or lipids or some other markers of inflammation, they might just see some improvements in the risk factors. The main bioactive compound in garlic is called allicin, which can be activated by first crushing the garlic and letting it sit out in the open for a few minutes. Heating garlic inactivates the enzyme that produces allicin, called alinase. In vitro, it's been found that heat reduces the platelet aggregation properties of both crushed and uncrushed garlic. But crushed garlic maintained its anti-aggregatory activity compared to the uncrushed garlic. This means that you can still cook with garlic and get the benefits, but you would want to crush it first. In human clinical trials that showed the benefits, the dosage for allicin ranged from 10 to 48 milligrams per kilogram per day, or for the aged garlic extract, it's up to 2400 milligrams a day. Taking two grams of crushed raw garlic could have similar effects and you would get the similar amounts. Garlic is also a pretty versatile herb that you can use in a lot of different meals. I like to add it to meat and vegetable dishes, but you can also use it in stews or just eat it as a raw snack next to your meal. The only downside is yes that it might leave a strong odor which is why I wouldn't recommend eating garlic in the morning or at lunch if you're going to somewhere public. I like to eat garlic for dinner so I get to brush my teeth after that and I've also discovered that aged garlic powder doesn't have a long lasting smell. In conclusion the evidence from mechanistic studies as well as clinical trials in my opinion suggests that garlic is somewhat of a, like a superfood <laughs> and it has nutraceutic properties that go beyond just like regular food. You don't get a lot of calories or you don't go get a lot of micronutrients or even like macronutrients from garlic so it's not something that you would sustain yourself on but it does appear to have some of these nutraceutical properties that improve your blood markers related to many of these chronic diseases specifically lipids and inflammation but you shouldn't take it with other medications if you want to learn more about heart disease and other compounds for longevity then check out my new book the longevity leap link in the description other than that thanks for watching this video make sure to click a like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier my name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.